I actually posted um, on Instagram today a little post about beliefs and it was an anonymous person. I don't know if anybody knows who actually quoted this. It was like the universe was saying something. It was like everything came into alignment because the truth is we believed in Santa Claus when we were kids for eight years, which is true. I mean, I believed in Santa Claus when I was about 12 or 13, but that's beside the point. Um, but then we don't believe in ourselves for five minutes. And I think this self-belief is a real detriment to not only just your mental health, but your actual physical well-being, your spiritual well-being. There's a lot of things that are going on. One, if you believed in Santa as a kid, put your hand up, I did. If you believed in Santa as a kid and the Easter Bunny and whatever it was, the boogeyman, I mean the boogeyman, who was afraid of the boogeyman for like 20 years of their lives? Me. I was still afraid of the boogeyman in my 30s because I really believed that um, someone would come in through the roof, through my manhole and attack me in the middle of the night. I actually put crim safe, for those in Australia who know what crim safe is, it's to protect you from burglars. Um, I had crim safe put on my manhole and the guy who put it up said, you know, they can just kick their feet through your ceiling and come in anyway. Beside the point, we have this belief and especially when beliefs are fueled by fear, it just explodes into like this volcanic eruption of emotions and hence why we do get anxiety and then it's followed by depression. And, it, and you know what that is? It's because we can't control the external circumstances that happen in our lives. We can't control what's happening in the world. We can't control the wars that are going on. We can't control these viruses. We can't control other people. We can't control how people think and feel. But what we can control is what's inside us. And that's our inner world. Now our inner world has to be, must be your number one priority because it is your sanctuary. Your thoughts and emotions so rule whatever happens in your external life whatever's in the external world that you live in. And everything, ladies and gentlemen, and I mean everything, is a friggin' choice. Now, you choose. You choose to think certain thoughts. You choose to allow your emotions to run wild. And you might get really nasty with me about this. Everything in life is a choice. You know, yesterday, I had some pretty bad news, you know, a lot of things going on, and you know what? I chose not to let that influence how I felt inside. Did I feel sad? Yes. I did feel sad because I really do love this person. Did I feel emotionally detached? I guess I did emotionally detach myself from the situation because I actually said something to a really good friend of mine. I said, since and I go, I know it keeps going back to seeing life and death. And it puts so many things into perspective because at the end of the day, you're saying, what kind of life am I living? Who am I living for? And what is my, what am, what, what is my purpose? This is a question everybody asks. We talk about goals, we talk about life goals, we talk about success goals, we talk about work goals, we talk about you know family goals. We talk about personal goals, but we don't talk about the spiritual goal. And it's taken me a long time, 20, 29 years of searching. And I really pushed back when a lot of things came into my, my line of vision and everything was about spiritualism. And I was like, I don't want to know about spiritualism. I want to learn how to make money. That's why I joined Proctor Gallagher Institute. Now ask me the question. Did I ever start, let alone complete, any of my units in the Proctor Gallagher Institute? Zero. Does that make me a failure? Absolutely not. Because a lot of things, once I actually signed up for that, I was in this mental attitude that I had to make money to succeed. I had to make money to have this lifestyle. I had to make money so that people saw me as um, as a businesswoman, so someone saw me that I had influence, I had, I was worthy. But the reality is, is that straight after that week that I joined up Proctor Gallagher for my course as a PGI consultant, my father was taken very ill and he died within seven days. 
and that was a huge catalyst in my life I mean anybody that you love you love dearly respect that dies and you watch them die has a complete profound impact on your life now that was a huge catalyst it made me realize that I was not after monetary wealth I was not after this financial I didn't want to have the most phenomenal successful business on the planet I didn't want to be the most renowned hypnotherapist I didn't want to have the most successful website and downloads of my hypnosis downloads I didn't want any of that I, I, I felt like I started searching within and that got me onto a journey I felt after that that then my journey wasn't a financial journey my journey was the spiritual journey that I have just been trying to like well I don't want to know that like just push that aside I didn't want to know that I'm pushing that one aside and it was really weird because it was like the universe was saying you need to do this I'm putting it in your line of vision because you really need to look at this and I was like being stubborn as usual no 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 my purpose is to make money my purpose was to be successful in other people's eyes not just my eyes in other people's eyes and I was getting it all wrong that was not my purpose my purpose was to share as much information and knowledge that I had accumulated in almost three decades of my life to get to this point where I am now understanding and realizing how important your life is and how important it is to never allow those external circumstances to influence how you feel deep inside because once you allow that to blend in you actually don't have any control and like I said I've had a couple of clients this week a couple of friends who've had literal life changing events that have happened to them things are always going to be affecting your life things are always going to be influencing you it's how you choose to respond to them that makes the huge difference how do you choose to respond to some negative news about a loved one how do you choose to respond about a sickness of a loved one or yourself how do you choose to respond to any news that you hear personally I, I don't actually watch the news my husband and I haven't watched the news in years when COVID hit he put the TV on and I was like what are you doing why am I listening to this negative shit? This is the stuff that gives you a stomach ulcer and you go to bed cranky and you, un and you don't realize why you can't sleep at night. It's because all this negativity has been infiltrated in your brain. TV is hypnosis. It's hypnotizing you. Oh, that square box hypnotizes you all the time. People are not aware of the psychology of advertising, television, news, what radio station you listen to what newspaper you're reading you are continuously being bombarded by information <laughs> and you are allowing it to sink in so this is why I say to you do not let external circumstances what is happening in the world what is happening around you what is happening in in your backyard don't let it influence what's happening in here you are more I can't explain how important it is to keep this as positive and beautiful and pure as possible how to keep that as positive as possible because this is what radiates out into the world this is what brings back to you what you're feeling and this is what's going to create the reality of your life but if you allow everything out there to influence this, then you are not in control. I received some, some um, terrible news. And, you know, that moment that you feel it, you feel, oh, this person, you know, you care about them. You want what's best for them. You, you pray for them. My husband decided I'm going to pray for this person. The other reality is, is that I sort of let that go. I didn't let it take control of what's happening in here. As much as you care and you love about that person, I didn't allow that to, to take root in here. Like a fear, sadness, grief. I didn't allow that to take root. 
I actually said to my friend who was um, in the States, I said to her, I'm actually literally high on life. And I know it sounds really contradictory. I've had people give me some really bad news of what's happened to them this week. Clients who are going through difficult times. But did I allow that in? I didn't. But like I say, it's, a, it's an inside job. This takes practice. It doesn't happen overnight. Just like every single habit, every single thought that we have, it doesn't happen overnight. Every single habit has been created over repetition and time. And you know what? Getting high on life takes repetition and time. And you've got all the time in the world. And whether you have a disease or you don't, whether you have a sickness or you don't, whether you are working two, three jobs or one, or you don't have a job, you have all the time in the world. Like Albert Einstein said, time is an illusion. Don't think that you don't have enough time. You have now. You have this moment. Take it because it is your gift. This is what you've got. You don't, tomorrow's gonna come regardless of whether you wake up or you don't. Tomorrow's gonna come. Yesterday has already gone. Stop living in the past because you can't get that back. Just like the exhaust fumes in a car, you will never get that back. So why do we hold on to these what ifs? What if we changed this yesterday? What if we changed that? Those negative thoughts don't do anything for you. They have no value. What you're thinking right now, what you're feeling right now, this is important and you know what make the conscious choice to change it whether it's real or not whether you are financially abundant or you're not what what choices do you have choice to feel shit or choice to feel good you've got the choice and that's your power you've got the tools up here you've got a tool up there you've got a tool in here and it is your choice to use it now nobody's taught us this stuff it's taken me 29 years of researching it's taken me 29 years to actually go, aha, uh -huh, I now get that. And in the last four years, I have been researching at 100% capacity. And you know what? I still feel like I haven't even scratched the surface. There is so much information out there. There is so much research you can do. There is so much you can do. But it all starts with little baby steps. And I implore you, I implore you, to please be conscious of your thoughts be conscious of your emotions and choose to get high on life choose to see the beauty in every little thing choose to see the beauty even in these crows that drive most of this population mad there is an abundance in nature there's an abundance in life we just have to be grateful for it and appreciate it but most of all Stop living out there. Stop living on what's on TV. Stop living on what's on social media. Stop living on what's on your Facebook posts. Stop living on someone else's rules. Start living by your own. And that is only an inside job and you have to go in here. Don't allow anything that's happening in the world make you feel like you are less than enough because you were born more than enough. And you will always be enough. So with that, I love you. I just wanted to give you a little, you know, pep talk or somewhere where I can sit in nature. And like I say, love and gratitude. I'm raw. I'm unfiltered. I'm going to speak my mind. I'm going to drop the F-bombs every now and then. I'll promise I'll try not to say anything worse than that. Um, but I don't care what people think all I'm here is to give you what's worked in my life what's worked with me and like I say it's taken me a really long time and if someone can find that emotional freedom someone can find that spiritual freedom well you know what then I've done something right then I feel like my purpose has been fulfilled but I will continue to do this because this is what I love and you've got to love what you do Anyway, I'm ranting. I'm going to enjoy this sunshine a little bit more. And um, I want to say love yous. 
and have a brilliant weekend.